Business over drinks. Business over drinks. This is Dave and Tom. This is business over drinks. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Business Over Drinks. My name is Tang and I'm dialing in from Singapore. Hello, my name is David. I'm calling in from Brisbane, Australia, Queensland. And we're here with a very special mate and guest tonight. It is, what time is it? It's 6 p.m. And the reason why I wanted him to come in today was it, it, triggered, it triggered when when him and I were having coffee, right? It was like a, in the middle of a work day and we were having coffee and we were sitting there for about three hours and I just realized, doesn't this guy need to do something? <laughs> he doesn't look stressed <laughs> like other business people I know. He doesn't look stressed like other, other employees I know. He wasn't constantly checking his emails. He wasn't biased, but this guy, uh, I think he's given me permission to say he's in terms of income coming to him is at least six figures and he's not part of some Amazon course. He's not, we're not selling a course today. He's a legitimate business person, but he's a solopreneur. I think that's the term for it. He's not aiming to be like a Steve Jobs at this point. You can tell me, you can disagree with me later if you are, but he's happy just to be by himself. He's 29 years old. Right. And in, and in my industry, like let's say marketing to get to six figures, let's say you want, you wanted to be an employee, you'd have to work several years to get there. You have to make work your way up to management or director level to get that level. And you probably have to kiss a lot of ass. You have to kneel down a lot to get to that level. Right. But he's managed to do it. <laughs> Sorry. He's managed to do it on his own. And that just impressed the hell out of me. And we had coffee for ages and he's the most chilled out guy. Probably the only business person I know who's not high octane, who's not extremely stressed or depressed or worried. And I don't know how he's doing it. So hopefully we'll find out in this podcast. So he is a founder, CEO, whatever of One Take Films. His name is Lyndon One, 29 years old. Hopefully you guys will learn a lot from him. So welcome to the show with Lyndon. How are you doing? Hey, mate. Thanks for inviting me on the show. <laughs> Hey, Terrence, how are you going? <laughs> how do you all both have three hours on a work day? Just like that, I don't get it. <laughs> I like, okay, I'm understand Dave, Dave, I understand. He doesn't do anything. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah no, they, 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 that's fascinating. Good to meet you, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to this conversation. No, yeah, and, definitely looking forward to it. I know when Dave first started this podcast and I was like super amazed and impressed by it. I'm like, oh, man, like. I've been following along, like I've been listening to a few and it's really interesting to hear people's stories. No, I really oh, appreciate really nice, feedback, man. Man. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. You get really yeah. bad feedback usually. People just saying <laughs> just really personal insults. <laughs> not even not, not even just about the podcast, it's just about us. We hate you, stuff like that. So this is great. <laughs> or it's just the that's nice. <laughs> and then they change the subject. That that's from the that's from family. Um <laughs> all right guys, uh, as per usual, what are you guys drinking? Dave, you wanna start? Yeah, so today there's a massive advertising campaign here in Australia for uh, James Squire 150 Lashes. Halfway through it already. It's pretty good. I like nice. it. All right. Uh, Lyndon, what about you? Nice. Um, I'm going for the gin and tonic. It's a sort of Japanese blend called Etsu. Oh, okay. Nice. And um, yeah, I picked it up recently just for like a Halloween. It was like a leftover bottle from Halloween party. So yeah. Oh, very cool. Okay. I'm sticking with the Japanese theme, a theme, so I'm having a strong zero. So I got this, uh, I got a delivery from uh, Beam Santori here over here in Singapore. They were kind enough to send me a few things to try. So um, yeah, I'll be drinking this and enjoying it because it's great. And also they gave it to me for free, so yay. So um, both have free <laughs> so, drinks. Yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> <you> uh, <laughs> all right, man, let's just come straight into it because I think we've got a lot to talk about with Lyndon. And um, yeah, I want to make sure we get in everything. We can. Dave, you want to start? Yeah, Lyndon, so base, well, you want to tell us about first, how, how did you start with One Take Films? You know, how, how did the whole career begin? Yeah, I guess it all began when I was in uni and I actually was studying engineering. And at the time, like film photos was just a hobby for me. And I had the opportunity to create a project for um, a friend who was a real estate agent at the time. And I just, I basically pitched to him, hey, like, Video for real estate right now is not a big thing, but I've seen it done and I'm just wanting, just, can you, can I have a shot? Like, can you give me a go? 
And then I did. And then as soon as I made that video, his entire office, they were really interested in what I was doing. And then that was sort of my first client. Um, and I guess at the time, like, I didn't really think that it could be a career slash business. It was just like money on the side. And I was happy with that since I was still studying at uni. Um, but then since then, I've sort of just poured more time, effort, money into it and just made it something bigger than what it was. So, Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. No, that's really interesting because um, we actually had another filmmaker on our show earlier, uh, Amanda Tan. And she was pointing out like a lot of people get into this, you know, for, for different reasons. And I think you and her in a similar way and you all are getting this because it's a mix between, you know, it's, it's a job, but also you guys love what you're doing. I see. Yeah. You guys are doing uh, something that you're passionate about as well. to extent. How do you balance, um, you know, doing your corporate gigs, the things that actually give you the money and being a creative, like a creative person, how do you balance that? Yeah. Um, it's definitely like it was new for me to balance, like to enter a job that I considered a hobby, and then I wasn't really sure what was going to pan out in terms of, am I going to enjoy this? Is it going to make me happy? And then am I going to have that work-life balance? Um, I can say at the end of the day, like a job will always be a job. Like even if it was a hobby to begin with, like um, it's always going to feel the same way. Um, in terms of balance. Um, I would say you got to ensure that you're doing the work that you're interested in. If it's just a job to get your money, then you better make sure that you're getting paid a lot of money. But at the end of the day, if, even if it's not like satisfying you, you have to recognize that and then just pull in the towel and not do it in the first place. Cause, um, I've experienced in the past where I'm halfway through a project and I just don't have any more motivation to finish it. And then um, it just doesn't end up working. It works out in the end, but like personally, it's, it's not really like fulfilling in a way. Yeah. Um, I've got a quick follow up, Dave. Sorry about that. I'm going to jump in. Um, is there anything, are there any brands, any topics, anything that's kind of off limits for you, uh, from, either from a personal perspective or a creative perspective that you kind of won't touch? That I won't touch? Yeah. Any, anything, it, it could be ethical, it could be just like, this is just really boring, I'm not going to do it. Or it could be something that's just, I mean, really not something you want to you get into. Um, I guess, like, it really, it really comes down to, like, on the go. Like, mm -hmm. I'll assess, like, straight away if they consult me. Yeah. Um, then I'll, I'll be able to figure out like, yes, this is like something that I'm into and then I'll just be honest with them mm -hmm. or I'll be, no, I, I'm not interested in this, but I do know someone is, and it's mm -hmm. really good to recommend people that you do know because they might be needing the work or they mm -hmm. might actually be interested in the work. And at the end of the day, if they're passionate about that topic or like industry, then they're more likely to do a better job. So yeah, it's a win-win. Got it. So adult film content's all right. Got it. Okay. <laughs> I think I think you I think I think I think I think we've ca clarified that. Cool. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah. no, I'm joking. I'm joking. He'll be in that. touch. He needs some solo <laughs> videos. <laughs> it's just it's all solo videos. That's the worst part. <laughs> <laughs> I just need your production skills. That's it. Um, no, I'm joking. Uh, let's make, David, we're cutting that out. We're cutting that out. <laughs> he's, he's, I don't think he's joking. He's made me film a few things in the past that I'm not very, I'm not very proud of. <laughs> Dave will do anything for anyway. money. Dave will do anything for money. I think yeah, I'm very opposite of you. <laughs> no. So how did you, have you ever worked for a company or have you, was that the first gig and then you just kind of continued from there? Yeah. So I almost took a job for a, um, a real estate company to be a full-time like videographer and they're offering quite a lot of money. And at the time I was actually considering doing it, but I think it just came down to, I, I was just so adamant on making my own brand and wanting to be by myself and just trying to make something out of nothing. And I was so obsessed with starting up my business and doing all the back end stuff and learning along the way that I knew if I just became a full fledged um, videographer for another company, it would just be the same as working for another person, nine to five, just flat out and possibly even not being that like just being undervalued really like, I didn't want to do that again. So, um, yeah. 
Okay. And so you went straight from uni to um, studying in like one take um, uh, films. Oh, that's fascinating, man. Um, would you, what advice would you give anyone who's kind of considering that same process? Because you're probably part of a minority of people who like successfully transition without any work experience or anything. Because it, it's tough, right? Studying in yeah. business, figuring out finances, learning how to sell. It's kind of tough. Um, I guess I didn't really, I didn't really go to uni to study like filmmaking or anything like that. Mm. I actually studied engineering and oh, wow, okay. so, sorry, I Did was, you graduate or were you? Yeah. So I graduated in 2017 and it was at that point where I said, all right, do I want to pursue engineering or do I want to go down like one take films? And I figured, well, it's a one, it's a one in a lifetime sort of thing to sort of just have a go at it. So I just had a crack at it and then here we are today. So, um, I guess like I would have, I was just telling myself like, Oh, I won't know unless I try. So that's why I just went along and did it. Um, but in regards to Tone's question, um, I guess like any advice would be to just like, I guess just do it, like be proactive. Like don't, don't sit around and, and think like, oh, like, yeah, I could do this and I could do that or like just worry, like better to just try it out and then have a backup plan and then just see it through. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't work out, like it's not the end of the world, like you can just move on to the next thing and you can, you'll get by it. So. Okay, okay, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, yeah, no, sorry, Karen, then, then, please. Yeah. Oh, I was just, one more thing. I was just going to say, like, I think having finished my engineering degree was sort of my backup and it sort of, it gave me like a safety net in the event that one take films didn't work out. Mm -hmm. I was always saying to myself, if this doesn't work out, that's fine. Like I can just go back to engineering and I'll be fine. Um, so if, if anything, if any advice is out there, then I guess it would be that to have like a safety net, a backup plan. Okay, and sometimes it, I, sometimes I would say like that might not work out for people because they might rely on that. But um, for me, I think it actually did wonders. Yeah. I mean, we'll have a link to his portfolio in our show notes. Is, is it onetakefilms.com? Is that the, the website? Uh, yeah, that's the website. Um, and then the IG is onetakefilmsau. So. One take film. I mean, he's, he's a great... You're, you're great at filmmaking. I mean, you have some great videos out Cheers, there. Man. You do all of them just for fun. Um, how, how did you even learn that then? How did you, yeah. yeah you study, you, you study in engineering. Like, what? <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, I guess um, it all started with like, just with having fun with video, um, picking up a GoPro. That's where it first started. And then um, just re really just trial and error, like watching YouTube tutorials, um, meeting people along the way and then just trying to do different things. Um, every time I pick up a camera, I don't always want to film like now I don't, but I think like when I first started, I just, I just got obsessed. <laughs> I just wanted to keep trying new things. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so, okay. I've got a question, right? Cause I, I love, I love asking people this, especially like you, you're, you're a solopreneur, right? In this sense. Um, like what's the one biggest misconception that your clients have, maybe not your successful clients, but clients that you have, have had working with you? Like, is it because they just expect you to do everything or they think they can bully you? Like, what, like what's the biggest misconception? Or even in this, some cases, horror stories that you have with your, with your uh, clientele. Yeah, I guess they um, underestimate how long things take. So in terms of like filming and editing, they don't really take that into account because they've never done it before themselves. Uh, working with clients that have like even an interest in editing video or anything like that, they, they know how long like things take. So they're more lenient on, you know, asking for more money or like just um, the initial quote to begin with, they, they're more understandable. But for the ones that don't understand that or they've worked with maybe people who are willing to do the work for free in the past, um, they're a little bit hard to, they're, they're more harder to convince, I guess. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Has anyone ever asked you like to do a project for exposure? Like, because that is like, yeah, 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 yeah. I heard so, so many people complain about that. 
Yeah. Um, it's the number one thing that um, a lot of filmmakers, I guess, talk about is exposure money. <laughs> um, and I guess, like, at the start, I mean, there's so many variables to take into account, whether you want to do it or not. Um, my personal opinion on the topic is probably it's killing the industry. Like, if you are doing work for exposure, like, it's it's not good for everyone in the and on our end at least, and it's making it difficult to convince clients that you know, like us filmmakers are worthwhile, like working with and paying money. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I have come across my fair share of um, uh, I will pay you in exposure, <laughs> like, and oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's that that I've heard is like one of the biggest issues with the creative industry, uh, musicians, yeah. filmmakers, anyone is they're like, um, the reason you're doing this for free is because we give you uh, uh, it's it's an incalculable amount of exposure, and people like just eating exposures is like it, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> is is there value in working for exposure at all, or would you completely say it shouldn't? It's like being an intern, right? You you work for for free or for, for very little, and but then it helps develop your career in the future, right? Oh, uh, Dave and I've had this you... argument before, man. Dave, like, don't don't fall in this trap. Dave's just like, oh, interns work for free. <laughs> like, don't pay I mean, people. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, this is coming from your former CEO, CEO self. Dave, like, <laughs> no, I'm um, just wondering if 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 there is a space for working for exposure or if you believe yeah. you know everyone deserves to be paid or something yeah well like i said before it becomes like it comes back to the variables on like the negotiation like if they are a high value client or they have like a big following then maybe it might be it might be your company good or your business or brand or, or yourself um because at the end of the day like if you think that yes if i do this video and it's going to help me get more clients and they're going to see how good my work is then yeah i'll do this one one off like but then maybe the next time if they ask you to do it again then you might want to reconsider i don't know it depends how much you value um getting your content out there and whether that's a good channel for you to be exposed so to speak um yeah i guess personally i haven't come across like big enough brands to sort of want to do that on the regular um yeah <laughs> i mean if you're big enough you can afford to pay people as well so kind of don't need to sell you to, like, to buy things that's like exactly thing. right yeah that's right. so yeah. the that's where you fall into the trap of or am i just like helping this company get get really good content for and then not really much for your end like yeah. i don't know mm. yeah. there's no there's no return on your investment basically well i understand what you mean though because it's driving down the price and then it's making it hard to make a living as a filmmaker if everyone is doing it for nothing, right? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, because yeah. their response will always say, their response will always be, "Oh, now, nah, like they might not say it to your face, but they're saying it out loud. They're going to be like, oh, we'll just find someone else to that will do it for free. You know, it will be fine.' Mm -hmm. Yeah, because at the end of the day, these days on Instagram and Facebook, they're just after like really short videos, like yeah. short, like like clips, and mm -hmm. yeah. I think like you know there's quite a lot of people out there that would be willing to do it for free just so that they can get that plugged or whatever um yeah <laughs> all right man can, I, i've got a question though about your your um your work your creative work right because i've been looking through your instagram i think i mentioned this before as well it's really cool you've got a lot, a lot of really good videos uh looking through your facebook stuff as well um like what what really stands out from you like what are your projects that you've done before that you felt like okay this this was the perfect match between me being a creative person and me being a business person. So I got money, but I did something that I'm super proud of. And I can, I can, I can like, this stands as a standalone creative like work of mine. Hmm. Um, I'm trying to think like, would have probably been like one of my earlier videos. I did this video for a real estate company that, sort of got a lot of attention at the time um and that was when I, it sort of gave me self-praise in a way so it sort of keep me going pushing forward or whatever um but the video itself was it involved like a lot of people in a house that we were selling and then we basically filmed it all in like a 
few takes and people, we, we basically got people to stand very still in the room and then the camera would sort of walk through the house and then like show off the house, but the people would be standing still. And I was able to sort of speed ramp through the house and show it in a way that at the time no one had done before. So I don't know if you came across that video. <laughs> it was pretty, it was a long time ago, but. Was it the no. mansion? Um, no, it was, I guess, it wasn't a mansion. It was for, L, it was for LJ Hooker, but. Um, yeah. I yeah. mean, we'll, we'll link that in our show notes, actually, because that sounds fascinating. I'd love to see yeah, it. it. Yeah. Just, send, just send us a link to it, Lyndon. Well, yeah, yeah, it is, sure. so We'll link it in our show notes, mm. man. Like, uh, so, uh, sorry, Dave, man, I'm going to jump in. I've got one no more question. Cause, um, um, so a couple of really interesting things, right, that I, that I kind of saw was um, you also do, like, wedding, uh, wedding videos as well as, like, you know, just, like, uh, more corporate creative videos as well. Um, yeah. like what's the difference between doing something that's, you know, like, uh, uh, like, you know, John and Sarah hired you to, to do their engagement and wedding, wedding video versus brand X wants you to do like, uh, uh, a video shoot for them to do like, it's not really a corporate shoot, but it's like a promo shoot for them. Like what's the difference there really? Yeah. I guess for weddings and stuff, like it's pretty rewarding because you're working for people, not for companies. Mm -hmm. and they're going to treat you like people <laughs> um so that to me is probably one of the original reasons why i first got into video was basically just creating memories as corny as it sounds like that's like my number one so in terms of weddings and engagements and i don't know just general weekends away like i'm always happy to work with people film stuff that's happening and like just create memories for them so weddings while that's not my number one source of income like it's very enjoyable and um it's just you're so much more involved like i mean i know like for for a company like working with a company like at the end of the day you create a project i mean you, you create a product and then you give it to them and then it's sort of it's done and the same thing occurs with weddings but you sort of feel like you you haven't just given them a product, you give them a lifetime product where they can sort of look back and have like a, a window to, to see that day, like over and over again. So to me, like that product is more valuable to those people, like, like in terms of relating that to a company that have just done a, like done a promotion for like a few months or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Hopefully it was a good wedding. If I had a shit wedding, I'd hate to look at it again and again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fingers so crossed I had a good go wedding. <laughs> <laughs> don't film it. If, if, you, if you're doing my video on my wedding, please, please don't film any bad stuff that happens. Yeah, okay. You're like just going to have to give me the, the signal. Just give me the signal and then I'll just... Yeah, the tongue, it, yeah. the tongue drinks too much again. I am definitely going to be drunk during the wedding, man. <laughs> <laughs> Like, cause that, that's the, like, nothing is going to stop me from telling stories because <laughs> you're going to tell stories. I'm like, Hey, I'm not really I'm just <laughs> pulled off security. Security was come and take you away. I won't even be part of the wedding party. I'll just be like in speech. I've got a speech. Yeah. That, <laughs> you that'll, just be, <laughs> that'll just be me. I'll just show up. Um, but I, I, back to business, you, there was at some point in time where you did try and, and grow it and start to have employees i think you had two employees or a few contractors here and there is that still something that you're aiming for or if not why, why is that yeah um so at the at the start of last financial year so last july 2019 i actually employed two other two other mates um ben and kane and we worked together for about six months um traction was good we had good turnover and a lot of new clients coming on board so you know we we're really busy um i learned a lot along the way uh having employees switching to like a like a prop company pty ltd and setting up like all the salaries and stuff like that so a lot was learned um towards the end of last year we sort of sat down and had a meeting and agreed that um we all sort of wanted to go back to doing our own thing, like our own sort of brand and 
while it wasn't really something that I had planned in my head, it actually made sense to do at the time as I wasn't doing the work that I wanted to do. My role sort of went from, you know, what I normally have been doing, which was filmmaking, editing, making videos to a guy that's sort of running the business and talking to clients, make, setting up meetings and like reviewing stuff. So I took more of a business role on rather than a, like a filmmaker's role. And that's sort of not what I wanted to anticipate anyway, or what I wanted to do. So at the end of last year, we, we sort of split up. Um, the brand remained intact and like publicly, not many people know that, like that's what happened, but it didn't matter in the end because we still sort of work all together anyway as contractors and like the brand itself is made up of like myself along with like anyone, any other contractors that work with me. But um, would I want to go back to doing that again? I I'm not like opposed to it as I'm pretty open-minded, but right now I'm very happy with just working on my own and like just pushing on. Um, and I'd rather spend my time in other areas of like possibly even starting up another business or something like that. Um, just for the sake of having like another stream or something like that. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's looking at it from a different perspective, man, because it, it's, it's different from, it's different from my journey. I think, I think I, I took the step of leaving the more of the, you know, being part of the, uh, being actually doing the work for a uh, firsthand and stuff. And I kind of went into the back end of stuff, you know, managing the business, being the clients partially because I'm lazy, but also partially because I thought that, you know, it's a, it's kind of like, it's what I would prefer to do in the long, in, in, in the long term, I guess. So, that, I mean, it's, it's yeah. interesting, right? It's different perspectives of the same thing. I think you, you and I have, um, the same view, right? You you want to do something, you want to build something, you want to grow a brand, make it make it into something that you can be proud of. I'm yep. excluding Dave from this on purpose because he doesn't have that. He doesn't. He doesn't care. <laughs> Dave, 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 just, Dave just says as long as, as, <laughs> as long as I have money for beer. Uh, that, that's basically his life. Um, Hopefully, we'll start getting free beer. <laughs> yeah, man. No, no, you won't. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, no, but interestingly, right? Um, just a little segue, because one, one thing I really want to point out on, the, on this podcast is the fact that we want to give people a, a wider range of views, because while I may not follow your view, Lyndon, I, I respect it. And I think it's really cool that the fact that you're really successful with it. And like Dave's on the other side, right? Dave's like, you know, how do, like, how do I recover after being just like not great at things? Uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> one more dig, last dig. That's the last dig, I promise. That's the last dig, I promise. Um, yeah, with the, 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 the wedding story hurt my feelings. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> you know, environment. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I was going to go again. Uh, no. Um, so like in that case, right, maybe you can tell me like, what are some of the biggest challenges you face kind of like growing a business from, um, zero, right. Where, where you started to like, you know, six figures a year now. Yeah. Um, Biggest challenges would just be learning from scratch, something that you weren't taught. So I guess you're holding yourself accountable and you're watching countless hours on YouTube videos, stuff like that. Um, and then again, just starting a business, like I didn't really have any, any knowledge, so to speak, other than the people around me to sort of ask questions. So um, yeah, the challenges of like, uh, recording your money, your income, expenses, all that stuff. And then talking to people about time management, what apps to use, what not to use, what's helping them. And then going through that trial process of creating your own process. So from talking to the client, doing the work and then delivering it and then sending out invoices, having creating that own process was probably most crucial and most difficult <laughs> to make for me. Um, but in saying that, I think that's why, or that's what's helped me become successful because the process has been enjoyable um, and it is efficient. So, mm -hmm. yeah. What, okay. What's the dumbest, like what's the dumbest thing you've bought? Like say for example, right. When you hit your first six figures, 
in, in the year, right? So you just, you hit your first hundred thousand, right? And you just like, you're like, it's all yours. That money's all yours. You don't have to give that money to anyone, right? What's the dumbest thing you bought? Dumbest thing I bought? Or the dumbest expense you've ever had? Dumbest legal? Oh, you can mention other stuff. Whatever. <laughs> legal? <laughs> no, man. I don't know. I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty good with my money. Like, I don't just go out and buy things off the bat. I usually do a lot of research. So, I'm trying to think what's the most dumbest thing I bought. I'm just looking around the room. It's like, hmm. This is like all equipment for you, man. Like, that just makes sense. Like, you're, you're building. Yeah, business, no, right? yeah, yeah. Um, I don't have an answer for you right now. Maybe I'll come back to you later. And then it just like, makes me really yeah. jealous. Like, you... You done made all the right decisions, <laughs> no, no mistakes. I, w yeah. I wouldn't say I've made all the. Uh, I mean, you just don't know. I'm, I'm like, I'm very. I just usually I just think about things a lot and just do the best I can. Really, like I did. In terms of like buying assets and stuff, I'm I'm usually yes, like this is gonna make me money or no, this is not. I almost bought a really expensive camera, like like a 8k like 30 35 to 50 grand camera and i think that would have been probably a stupid idea but at the same time i'm sort of like oh uh, i could probably justify this and then yeah it really just comes down to like how fast you can turn over that money to pay that off and then is, is the that doctor really now, right yeah it is, is, it, is it COVID? yeah man that just yeah. sounds that just sounds like a massive business expense while while being serious it's not it's not stupid i'm going to show you something that's that's yeah. very stupid this is uh part where my money goes <laughs> so yeah that's that's pretty stupid um keeps so doing just, it yeah just like all the alcohol. i don't think that's stupid at all that's that's keeping you sane you know no man that's just <laughs> like i drank most of it i drank most of it no man. that's that's dependent <laughs> okay. that's keeping, that's keeping dependent yeah exactly i don't think it's keeping me sane i just think it's just keeping me uh on a leash i just like <laughs> I need it. I can't leave. Uh, no, um, no, it's really, no, like, like I spent a lot of money on, and that's not even the full like amount, right? Cause I drank about half of it already during, since the pandemic. And I've got another stack in the other room that I put out for people that I, I could if guests come over. I'm just like, Hey, drink this, not the good stuff. So um, I have like the not so good stuff in the other room. But yeah. Right. Like, it's just, just too much, man. Like I have a problem. Um, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> Is that another podcast? Or... <laughs> yeah, I think that's yeah, another. That's but another speaking guy. of which, the you know, one reason why I started drinking a lot was because of business. And I, and I think you're, you're probably the most chilled out business person I know. Have you always, really? are you always <laughs> chill? Like, are, you, are you generally positive or am I just seeing one side of you? Is there like a crazy story? <laughs> three, you during a three hour <laughs> coffee session. <laughs> three hours, man. Oh, what the hell? I think like I have my days, but generally speaking, I always, if, when it comes to my business, like I always am pretty, pretty positive, pretty open minded. And I feel like that's sort of had a big impact on the people that want to work with me as well. Maybe I'm um, mm. like, it would be great to sort of have an interview with one of my clients and ask them a question, but I'm pretty sure like, you know, keeping it positive and, and always like having that mentality is, is always going to help you get more clients. Um, yep. for sure. Um, <laughs> being chilled and laid back. I don't, I don't know if maybe this is me. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm just too used to people like Tony know, so. who literally cries in a taxi <laughs> ride <laughs> <laughs> screams at people on the phone um yeah. You, yeah you saw that once and i really did scream at someone on the phone but they deserved it man they deserve it. <laughs> uh but, oh, i mean like, that's awesome that's something to aspire to it and yeah, um, is it is, do you have any tips for staying positive especially oh, okay, when yeah. you know business is all up and down right unless unless yeah. you're in i guess it's all it's always up but uh, well no it's not always up but like, you're gonna have downs but i guess hmm. I mean, maybe that's why I've chosen to go down the path of just working by myself because I only have to worry mm -hmm. about myself. Yep. So I'm minimizing the stress and then I'm able to sort of be more happier in the, in the, in the long run. Whether that's the right decision or not financially, I don't know. But um, I know for now, like, this is what I want to do. And then um, ways that I've sort of kept a work-life balance is um, playing volleyball. 
I love playing volleyball because I get away from work and it's the one time where I'm not thinking about work. So whether, you know, you're playing sport or gym or drinking, like if that's what switches you off, then I, I strongly suggest doing I, I feel it like there's um, a little bit of judgment in that. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I just feel like there's a little bit of judgment in that. And I apologize for like... sharing something real. <laughs> I apologize. Never again. <laughs> no, being real is all... That's where it's all that, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like work-life balance is very important. It's something that I've learned along the way. And if, if I don't do it, then I'm usually not in a great mood myself. So, I mean, we all go through it, but it's how you balance. I mean, it's how you keep in check, hey? So, yep. Yeah. I absolutely agree. I agree with that. Yeah. All right. Dave, you got any more questions for Lyndon, man? Yeah, well, one last thing is, you know, your journey to where you are now. And any key lessons you'd like to share with anyone who's potentially thinking about, you know, the path that you're, you're on right now in the future you want to you know, be, be partaking as well? Yeah, um, I guess... I guess I would say there are a few things. Um, the main things are just just be proactive. Like, just once you decide that this is something that you want to try, um, be proactive, be open-minded, talk to a lot of people about it. Um, don't necessarily rely on people to tell you that your work is is good. Like, as long as you're happy with how it's looking, then that's good. But be open to like being criticized and and constructive feedback is probably like the worst. I mean, it's probably the best word to use. I know in my first year, I was always asking people for constructive feedback and, and I would always word it that way so that I know that they know that I'm okay with receiving, you know, negative comments or That's whatever. Like, yeah. Um, but I would say now, like now when I create things, I'm not so much looking for positive comments because I'm very happy with how things are looking. And I know like, you know what what it should be or what it shouldn't be and i think that's also another thing to stick by just just trust your gut um and the other thing is probably just time management like figure out a system where you know you're always going to be self-sufficient like um with your time and figuring out what apps or whether it's like you know google calendar or like trello or all those organizational apps like what's going to keep you on task um because at the end of the day, you're working, even though you're working for yourself and like every job is just like a, a number, you still got to figure out like, you know, are you actually making profit with your time? Um, so figure out a way to be most efficient and enjoy the creative process. Like, yeah, that's oh, nice. really my two cents. Yeah. Okay, nice, man. So uh, how do you prospective customers and clients reach you man. how do they do that um you can reach me on my website instagram or email so my email is just one take films at gmail.com okay and we'll put your personal mobile number on our website and like on social media and stuff we'll, we'll send it out to everyone don't worry <laughs> so oh yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm gonna change that <laughs> Um, just one, just to add to that, the, the apps, one thing we learned when we were starting our agency is uh, we, we use this app, really great app called Harvest. And what Harvest did was it, it synchronizes your invoicing with your log, your, your work you log in. So whenever I'm working one particular client, for example, I'll, I'll log it in Harvest and we'll time my work. Then I'll click end and it will compare it to how much we're invoicing the client. And then when we looked at the numbers, we realized that we were being paid negative X amount of dollars per hour, the amount of work we're putting in per client. So using yeah. tools like Harvest can really help you out to make sure like you, you, you're doing great work, but you're also profitable. We're, we're not sponsored by Harvest, by the way. Dave just made it sound like it was a terrible sponsored video and we're not really? sponsored by it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, just, you just made it sound like there was a gun to your head while you were telling us that. <laughs> Thanks, it's a great dude. tool. That's a yeah, great you, tool. You should say that versus saying like, you know, we used to do this and it was great. Please don't kill me. <laughs> Let my family go. <laughs> but yes, please Harvest. If, if you are listening, please give us some money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
no yeah it's that's good definitely tool. um what you want to be doing because yeah if you're if you're realizing that you're working on the negative then that's not good or at least in your in your contract with that company maybe just say oh like this is a like the quote that you send out can be amended depending on how long things take so you know that's also mm. something to take into account yeah yeah yep sounds good Nice man. Um, hey, Lyndon, thanks for thanks for coming on the podcast, man. A- anything that you want to no anything that you want to share? Anything that we didn't bring up that was you know like we missed out because we were making fun of Dave. <laughs> what Tony was talking about is 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 deep rooted alcohol problems. We probably shouldn't <laughs> joke about. <laughs> it's a disease, man. Don't make fun of that shit. Um, no, not really. Like I think um, I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah. I'm more than more, I'm more than like happy to keep talking about Dave's situation as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. uh, that, 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 that's that's Thanks, a separate guys. podcast about Dave's complete lack of <laughs> moral fiber <laughs> and inability to like you know want to support empathize or, like um, yeah and his and his blatant disregard of like human rights in general. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've I've hung out with Dave for a long time. He he lived in Singapore for a while. It was it was terrible, man. The things he did, the stories yeah. I could tell. None of none of which are true. <laughs> but anyway, we really really enjoyed your time, Lyndon. And I think a lot of people can learn from you. I'm always learning from you as well. I think yeah, I definitely need some of that chill factor. And um, oh, it's too late, man. Okay. I'm learning from you too. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Yeah. This was awesome, man. I appreciate you taking your time, dude. Like it was nice no, meeting you. Okay. And yeah, also, I'm I'm definitely going to be like, we'll share we'll share some of your portfolio on the website and on socials. I think that'll be really cool. Cheers, man. No, man. Like I like I said, just gonna reiterate, man. It was great having you on. I think people are gonna learn a lot from this as well, uh, purely oh, because okay. <laughs> it's a it's a different it's a very different viewpoint from the people we had on before. And yeah, I, I was and just I gonna say, it. yeah, yeah. I appreciate. Yeah, I mean, that. Mm. Mm. people really romanticize you know starting a huge company you know you need to be the, the next microsoft you need to be a billionaire you need to become president or whatever but depending it depends on where your happiness lies right so if you're happy with being on your own as of now anyway things may change then just go for it, it depends yeah. where your, your happiness and your values lie yeah 100 yeah, percent. Yeah, Thanks for listening, everyone. If you have any feedback, any constructive feedback, hit us up at hello at businessoverdrinks.com. Um, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, comment. It will really help us grow. So thanks so much, guys. See you later.